So, <clears throat> I don't care who you are, whether you're a believer or whether you're not, whether you are an atheist or whether you are a Muslim or a Buddhist or a Hindu, you, at one point or another, have needed guidance and directions. Yes, even the guys in the room who refuse to stop and ask for directions. I, it, it, it's okay, so it's not just guys. That's good to know. Well, <clears throat> we were, Sherry and I were, oh, we were living in, in, in Springfield, Illinois. That, yeah, I know. It's, there's tons of Springfields, but in, in, in Illinois. <laughs> And we were going to volunteer down at the Christian radio station because they were having their fundraiser kind of thing going on. And we had never been to that radio station. It's in the middle of a cornfield out in the middle of nowhere. Like, like it is like, I, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. And we were going down there and, and I'm trekking along with Google Maps Yes, and we end up on this one lane dirt road, literally through a cornfield. <laughs> and I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. Come to find out that if I had studied a map, I didn't have to take the dirt road. That... If I'd have known where I was going, I could have taken the gravel or the <laughs> avoided the gravel road and gone on the the, the paved road um, all the way around. And, and it's just like, but I didn't know where I was going. I like I didn't I didn't have a clue where this place was. I didn't know any of the routes. I didn't know. I mean, I've got a good sense of direction. I know north, east, south, west. I mean, I you know. Get me in a city, and I may lose that direction for a minute. I have to find the sun between all the buildings, but we'll get we'll get there. Um, but no matter who we are, we need we need guidance, we need directions, because sometimes we get off track, and we need to get we need to get get some direction, and we need to be directed and or redirected. Um, sometimes we end on these old gravel roads that. Or these old dirt roads that, that tend to get washed out and bumpy and, and, and dirty, and we're like, how did how did I get here? Like seriously, how did I get here? It makes us wonder. But too often, as the guys or people who don't stop to get directions. We we see we see this idea of getting direction and or guidance, and, and we see this as a sign of weakness. Somehow, that that that, that somehow I'm I'm less of a man if I if I stop and ask the local people where to go, <laughs> um, which is it's hilarious because because we can't. We can't get wrapped up in, the, in thinking that this is a sign of weakness. Um, we're going to be in Acts 16 today. And I, I, I was reading through 16, and I'm just... There's four different stories going on here. And I was really having a hard time trying to figure out which one of these stories to kind of hone in on and, and choose to kind of look at and and well the Holy Spirit is is a very good leader and he he, he showed me something that I he showed me something I needed to see and I'm like oh cool uh hey, yeah that that'll preach all day <laughs> I'm like yep okay I got it so we're gonna be in, in Acts 16. But back up just a little bit before that, back into chapter 15. At the end of chapter 15, we see that Paul and Barnabas have a disagreement. They, they 
are getting ready to go on their second missionary journey, and Barnabas wants to take along John Mark. But the problem is, is that the last time they went on this trek, John Mark leaves them part of the way through the trip. Paul's like, "Uh uh-uh, we're not taking John Mark. Barnabas goes, oh yeah, we are. Well, they end up having an argument, and they end up actually splitting company because... Because it, it, it says that they had, uh, da, 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 they, uh, verse 39 says, they had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, which is an island down, um, it, it's south in the Mediterranean, south of, of what is now Turkey and, and Greece. Um, but it is, it's down in that area, so that's Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and left and committed by the brothers to the grace of the Lord. He went through Syria and Cilicia. So, so essentially what we've got here is, is we've got Barnabas going over here and Paul going up the edge of, of the Mediterranean around that way. We get two different directions and double the gospel spread. God even uses the disagreement between Paul and Barnabas as a good thing. Chapter 16 comes all comes along and, and Paul and Silas are a thing and 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 it comes around and and they come across uh, Timothy um, as they went through Derby and Lystra and see, Timothy was this, Timothy was this, well, he was a half-breed. He was, he was a mutt like us, you know, like, well, I, well I, I'm French, German, Irish, and like whatever else you want. I was going to say, yeah, just throw, throw anything else in there, and who knows, like, I, I'm, I'm a mutt. I, I don't know. I really don't. Like, uh, you know, well, Timothy... His, his dad was a Greek, but his mother was a Jewess. So he's got, he's got a Greek father and a Jewish mother. Okay? Well, they have this issue. Let's read here in verse 1. It says, He came to Derby and then to Lystra, where he, a disciple named Timothy lived, whose mother was a Jewess and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. The brothers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him. Paul wanted to take him along on the journey, so he circumcised him because of the Jews who lived in that area, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they traveled from town to town, they delivered the decisions reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem for the people to obey. So the churches were strengthened and in faith, strengthened in the faith and grew daily in number. So this, this, they had this issue with the fact that, that Timothy was actually part Jewish, but it, he was not circumcised. Now, we've heard Paul talk about this in, in other places, going circumcision doesn't matter. Well, he didn't do this. You know, he didn't have Timothy circumcised for salvation. It was for the ministry because he was part Jewish. Right, and it was actually a really good idea because because they were actually able to reach some people through this ministry because of that. You see, all of this to say that the Holy Spirit completely guided this situation. Like like the Holy Spirit is all over this from from the split between Paul and Barnabas all the way down to Paul and Silas going and picking up Timothy because. If you know anything about the Bible, you know that Timothy becomes a protege of Paul, and and we have two letters that Paul wrote to Timothy. This was Holy Spirit guided every step of the way, even through the shortcomings, even through the shortcomings of a of mere men. Verse six: Paul and his his companions traveled. Throughout the region of uh, Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia, when they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. Isn't that an interesting statement? 
But the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. Verse 8, so they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that Paul called us to preach the gospel to them. I want you to notice a change of terms. This is a complete side note, a total, total rabbit trail, like, like total rabbit trail. But I, 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 I know, I, see, this is why I mark in my Bible, because I had forgotten that I had, I picked up on this. Notice that in verse 7, he says, when they came to the border of Amijah, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. But go down here to verse 10. It says, after Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Do you know the tone change? That means that they picked up Luke somewhere in there between verses 7, 8, 9, and 10. Paul becomes a part, or excuse me, Luke who is writing the book of Acts, now becomes a part of their party because he then switches voices to we and us instead of they and them. Just an interesting side note. See, the Holy Spirit had prevented them from preaching the gospel in Asia, but the Spirit of of Jesus wouldn't allow them to enter this. I I, I got a map because I wasn't 100% sure myself of the exact layout of all these provinces because up here you see you, the, the big lettering here you see Asia right there in the center well the little bit smaller titles are all of the provinces and then the, the smaller titles yet are all the towns notice that they, they go from uh, Derby and Leicester over here on the right side of the screen and they completely go through Asia over to Troas they completely bypass it. This Holy Spirit prevented them from preaching in Asia. It even says the Spirit of Jesus wouldn't allow them to enter Bithynia, which is the province north of that. And then Paul had a vision of a Macedonian man, which, by the way, Macedonia is this neon yellow greenish area up over here on the left hand side you see that's where Philippi Thessalonica and those churches are at as in the letter to the Thessalonians and the church and the Philippians see those are pro- those are towns in the province of, of Macedonia. This is all Roman territory at this point. You see, God was guiding and directing and redirecting Paul and the party to where he wanted to go. They tried two different times to go to Asia, and both times God stopped them. Do you have trouble picking up where God wants you to go? You're not alone. Because apparently Paul had the same problem. Twice. And this is just what we know of. That's just what's recorded here in Acts. But twice they tried to go to these different provinces and they were shut down both times. Holy Spirit and Jesus like, nope, you're not going here. And then he had a vision that directed him to go to Macedonia. We read on. Verse 11 says, From Troas we put out to sea and sailed straight for... Oh, yeah. Samothrace. And the next day on to Neapolis. 
From there, we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony and the leading city of that district of Macedonia, we, and we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river where was a, we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth from the city of Thyatira, who was a worshiper of God. I'm going to put a pause button right here in the middle of verse 14. Where is Thyatira? Anybody see that on the map? Yeah. Where is it at? Oh, yeah. They were prevented from preaching the gospel where? In Asia. In Asia. Because the person who was going to get it started, they had to find in Philippi in Macedonia. See, Lydia was a dealer of purple cloth. Purple cloth who is from Thyatira. Um, hello, God, how are you? <laughs> Just, God has multiple purposes in everything he does. It's never just one purpose that God accomplishes. It is typically a whole boatload of different things that God is trying to accomplish when he does something. When he does something. Let's pick up. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house, and she persuaded us. Her whole household came to believe. Which is typical. Like, 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 when, 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 like, you know, we, we see it with Cornelius. When Cornelius believed, his whole family believed. When Lydia comes to faith, her whole household believes. This is a typical kind of a thing. Okay? God is guiding every step of this. While they're there, We have a story here through the last part of, of chapter 16. In uh, verse 16 here, it says, Once we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. The girl followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the Spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And at the, that moment, the Spirit left her. When the owners of the slave girl realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar. My advocated customs unlawful for us Romans to accept our practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten. One, after they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. We're going to hit the pause button here in verse 24. This, this, this group are going to, to a place of prayer. They met a slave girl who, who was apparently making a whole bunch of money and making these guys rich by, by fortune telling. And, and, and see, they, this girl was falling around Paul, and, and sh this is what she's shouting. These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. Is that statement fundamentally incorrect? No, it's not. It's not incorrect. That's actually a, a very true statement. So why was it that, that this slave girl who was, who was demon-possessed, and this, this demon's following Paul around going, this is, the people are preaching to you the way of the Most High God, that this is the way to be saved. Why, number one, why would the demon do that? Number two, why would that annoy Paul? Well, the fact of the matter is, is that 
it is highly likely that she was trying to increase her reputation, or the demon, I say her, but the demon, because this is the evil at work here. The, the demon is trying to garner, garner authority by, by saying these true things, and, and, and they're going to end up making more money for them by increasing her, her reputation. And, and Paul is just absolutely annoyed at this because he doesn't, Paul doesn't want to be tied to a demonic spirit. Right? I, I mean, that's, no, that's not what we're, we're not about that. So he rebukes the demon. The demon is, is, is then cast out of her. <laughs> and then they're up, then the owners of this slave girl are upset because their, their meal ticket is now gone. And, and, and they drag them, in, drag them into the square before the magistrates and like, these guys are upsetting our way of life and all this other stuff. And they end up throwing them in prison. Here's, as Paul Harvey would say, the rest of the story. <laughs> Paul Harvey was great, man. I'm telling you. I loved listening to him. He was, hmm, just He had that voice, you know, just... Mm. 25. At about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a, such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everybody's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself! We're all here! The jailer called for the lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all of the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds, and then immediately he and his family were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them, and he was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. You see, they're in prison. They are praying and singing songs of praise to God. In prison, by the way. Jailed for Jesus, literally. For casting a demon out and ruining a couple of guys' meal ticket. I'm sorry, that just, it, it, that, that rubs me the wrong way. Like, I'm just, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just, I, mm -mm. yeah. God then miraculously opens the jail and they sit right. They didn't move. <laughs> Their chains fell off. The doors are open, but yet they didn't go anywhere. The jailer, seeing that all of this has happened, is like, oh my gosh. And in Roman circles, when you lose a prisoner, you go to the crucifix. Like, crucifix, like, like you are dead where you stand. And he was about to run himself through. He's about to kill himself because because he was afraid that they were all gone and Paul's like no stop we're all here hold on I don't know about you but a prisoner that has been released and is still sitting there um, there may be something to this, this these guys story there may be something to this whole Jesus guy that they're talking about and and, and the jailer and his whole family are then saved. You see, the one constant through each one of these stories is the guidance of God. That's what I saw this week. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here Monday, Tuesday, and, 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 and uh, it was actually Tuesday morning. And I'm, I'm sitting here going, what in the world? How am I going to choose what 
story because all every one of these are just oh they're so good it's like there's there's like a plethora of lessons out of each one of them and i'm like i can't, I can't just pick one and god's like um look at the thread that ties them all together they're all being directed and guided by the holy spirit every single one of them god has guided this entire thing and 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 to many people counselors are seen as a weakness or in our pride we think that we can handle it Back in the early years of America, we, we, we had this, this, this mentality of, of pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You don't need a head shrink and, and, and just, you know, we don't, we don't need this stuff. Well, let me tell you what. That line of thinking has got us where we are today. Because here's the thing. What was the name of that God or that Christ gave the Holy Spirit the great counselor is that a sign of weakness that he called the Holy Spirit the counselor because in in the mindset that we've got that counseling and guidance and directions are bad and weakness does that mean that the Holy Spirit is a weakness because that's what we're saying when we say that well, I don't need a counselor. Um, my friend, if you're a Christian, you have a counselor every single day of your life living inside of you. That is not a weakness. That is a strength. We need a counselor. We need to be directed. We need to be guided. I don't know about you, but I can't make it through life without having these people that I have close to me. I rely on a lot of different people to help me get through my day and get my thinking straight because it's not hard for me to get into an area of stinking thinking and I get you know, spiraling down. It doesn't take much. It does not take much. The Holy Spirit is our guide. He is not a weakness. And we have been designed for community and I'm going to get to this in a minute but we've been designed for community and we need each other. We cannot be afraid to be directed and or redirected. I just had a scripture pop in my head. Yep, that's exactly where it goes. Yep, 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 yep. And I, I, I say ironically as it is, but we're talking about Timothy here. Talking about Timothy here. And Paul... <laughs> Paul writes to Timothy in the second letter to him in chapter 3 and verse 16 and 17. He says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. That is all training and guidance. Every last one of them. Every last one of them. We cannot, we cannot be equipped to do God's work if we are not willing to be guided and directed by God. Amen. Cannot. It's not a, it, 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 it is, it, it's, it's just not going to happen. Sometimes we get it wrong. And that, you know what? It's okay that we, we, we don't, we don't get it right all the time. Because, because even Paul, and I'm not talking about sin here, I'm talking about, I'm talking about trying to discern that, the, discern that which, which God is, is guiding and directing and leading us to. Even Paul had that problem. They tried twice to go to Asia and preach the gospel and the Spirit of God. They had to stop them both times. <laughs> He's like, no, you cannot go here. Even Paul had problems with that. And if Paul had problems with that, you and I are going to have problems with that. Because I don't know about you, I'm not even, I don't even measure up close to Paul. <laughs> like, not even close. You see, God will lead us to where 
He wants us. God puts all the right people in all the right places at the right time for the right purpose. I have seen that too many times for that not to be the case. I've seen it too many times. We need to be open to God's lead. Christianity is not about what you know. It is about who you know. It has nothing to do with what you know. It is what it is who you know. Too many times we get wrapped up in our daily routine. We get, we get too wrapped up in, in, in all of these external influences from, from everything from, from, you know, oh gosh. It, and, and now that Hannah's kind of graduated out of school and our last child is no longer in the school age years, Sherry and I have kind of looked back on this and it's like, you can't help but get wrapped up in the demanding schedules that is the school age years. I mean, it just it just happens. But we we get dominated by our schedules. We get dominated by 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 the apps on our phone and by TV and, and social media. We get dominated by by the things that the media that, that that dominates our attention. They tell us you know what should be of our concern and what should not be of our concern. And and, and if I believed and paid attention to everything that the media told me, this is why I had to stop watching the news. This is why I had to stop watching the news, because I found myself so stinking depressed all the time that I couldn't see the light of day. I had to stop watching the news, because it's nothing but bad story after bad story after bad story after bad story. I hate to tell you, but we're human. Sin happens. But you know what? The Spirit of God is here too. And there's a lot of good that happens too. Because what demands our attention is where we will go. Or what we pay, what we pay attention to is where we will go. If we, are, if we follow God, that is where we will go. If we follow politics, that is where we will go. It, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's inevitable. It's that old, old saying, I think, therefore I am. Yeah. <laughs> that which dominates your mind is that what you think about. That is the whole point of Romans 12, 1 and 2. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If we focus on God, that is where our mind is going to go. And that is what has to dominate our time. So, we have to be open to God's lead. We also have to pray for discernment. In discernment, I, I decided, like, I, I, needed to, I needed to kind of define this. <laughs> Discernment is the ability to grasp and comprehend God's direction. That is, that is, that is discernment. It, it is, it's that second half of, of Romans 12 too. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can test what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. It, it is, that, that's that whole testing thing. That's discernment. We, we, we have to we have to pursue the we have to pursue the mind of Christ so that we can pursue the will of God does that make sense it was in my head I wanted to make sure that came out right <laughs> Just like the problem is is that things are so much easier to see in hindsight. Like, like, like it's really clear to see uh, things in the rear view mirror. Like, like my dad, my dad has got this little paper that, that he keeps. It's, it's on the computer and he just kind of, 
He, he calls it God's presence. And it usually, he's like, it usually happens after the fact. But he's like, I go back and write down these stories of where God has intervened and done something in my life that I didn't realize that he was doing at the time. It's seen in hindsight. God's hand is seen much clearer in the rearview mirror than it is out the front windshield. But that doesn't mean that it's not there. It's just really difficult. Which is why it has to be, has to be bathed in prayer. It has to be. Not only is it bathed in prayer, but we have to bathe ourselves in Scripture. We have to immerse ourselves in, 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 in the Scriptures that God has written down for us. Here's the thing. Growth and maturity do not happen apart from Scripture. It will not happen. Because in order to grow and mature in God, we have to get to know Him better, and we don't get to know Him better unless we commune with Him. It's not just scripture, but it's also through fasting and prayer and meditations, the disciplines we went through earlier this year. That, that, that's the whole reason we started off with the disciplines is because these, the, the disciplines are the cornerstone. Jesus is the cornerstone, and, and, and the disciplines are, are, are these bricks that surround how to commune with him. We... we 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 practice these disciplines not as a not as a have to but as a get to because we love our savior and we want we want to commune with him and the problem is is that we say we want to discern god's direction but we don't necessarily spend the time communing with him We say that we, we want to grow in our walk, but we do not take the time to pray. We say that we want to deepen our, our faith, but we don't take time to read the scriptures that are written about him. We don't fast from our daily sustenance to take on the true bread of life. See, that's... If American Christianity has a shortcoming, this is it. The, the problem is where the rubber meets the road. Because we say we are really... I still find a way to try and knock my microphone off. Like, really? <clears throat> we say all of these things. We, we know the right words to say, but the problem is actually doing it. Yes. We have no follow through. Mm -hmm. Like, that is our problem. That is our problem. And the reason that is a problem is, is because while we have, we have the time and capacity to, to intellectually grow deep on our faith, there is no persecution that actually strengthens that, that faith in action. One of the documentaries that, that I had watched, the opposite, and in actuality, in persecuted countries, the opposite is the problem. They don't have time to grow deep because their, their faith is, is buried in action because because they're trying to survive every day because it's illegal to be a Christian where they're at. But they don't grow they don't they don't grow deep in the scriptures because more times than not the Bible is outlawed in their countries. They don't necessarily have access to it. So the opposite problem happens there. Something tells me maybe we kind of need to use both of our strengths maybe to influence one another. I don't know, just thought. 
we've also talked about being designed for community. The idea is that we we need guidance from God, but we also we also need guidance from the community of believers too. You, my friend, are not an island. You need other people. Whether you think you do or you don't, you do. Seeking counseling is not a weakness. Seeking, I say counseling. Seeking counsel, like, like guidance and direction. I mean, sometimes counseling is, you know, sometimes we need a professional um, psychologist, psychiatrist. You know, sometimes that is necessary. But seeking counsel and guidance and direction, that, that is not a weakness. <clears throat> I personally, I've been, through, I've been through a lot of counseling in my life. <laughs> like, like I, I, you know, I, I've been through a lot of, of professional um, settings. But here's the thing. I also have mentors and friends that I rely on to help counsel me, to help me bounce things off of that I rely on on a daily basis. And here's the thing, to say that the Holy Spirit speaks through these different counselors that I have is an understatement. God works through every single one of them. And trust me, it's not easy to hear what they have to say to me at times, but it is absolutely needed. Proverbs eleven fourteen, Proverbs fifteen twenty two, and Proverbs twenty four six all talk about the need for for gathering counsel around us. Being a Christian, my friends, and this this is your big idea. Being a Christian means being directed and or redirected by God. We need it. Because sometimes we get off track just like that Google map takes you down the, the old dirt road. And old, oh, I, yeah, I told the, the Car- Carlinville story of the cornfield. What's wrong with dirt road? Fine if you have a car that can drive. <laughs> yeah, if you have a car that can drive. When you don't have a Jeep. <laughs> No, no, no four-wheel drive. Yeah. But just like we get off track there, we we get off track in our life and we, we need we need to take the time to stop and ask for directions. We can't be so prideful that we think that we can do this all on our own because we can't. We can't. And we need we need each other and we need God.